na chine ke nanke pro mi hene ina onyo ko na ni ana zoputa onyo ko na ni ya bo opu ya ni na bu ye na amen anyi we na ase eze bu pede nkosi na ro tuto na e jamma na nsopuru site na ebige bi maru na ebige ise 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 Welcome, my amazing viewers. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you so much and remember blessed. If you are joining me from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia, or any part of the world, I thank you very much for your contribution. Please, each time you watch my video, go to the comment section and put down your comments. That's it. The one of northern extraction is at the base of uh, secessionist agitations. Perhaps the South should unite and reject any aspirant from the north. Mm. And that's the that's the beauty yes. of democracy uh, and cross fertilization. Are, yeah, exactly, of exactly. Yeah. One of the things I will uh, say about uh, the candidate of uh, the Labour Party and IPOP, because somebody mentioned mm. it. In he what? said, "What he said is that because uh, mm. of this insistence on mm. northern candidates, uh, northern presidents at the time, that this was fused as mm. such agitations. It, it's not insistent mm. because mm. people elected Atiku. Nobody forced him on uh, anybody. From there were candidates f uh, of the PDP from the southeast who that mm. contested with him. The aspirants for the, the as aspirants, for sorry, the ticket. for the ticket, mm. and uh, he got votes from the southeast too." Mm. So how would that be insistence? It's not insistence. That's democracy. People voted for him. Then coming back to some of the things that are happening in the Southeast, mm -hmm. one would have, even before P2B emerged as a Labour Party candidate, I spoke to some of my friends. Mm -hmm. I have, a ver I have a, a very good friends in the Southeast. I spoke to them that, look, what is happening now, if you guys don't speak out strongly against it, it will come to haunt you. What the North is now saying is that, look, uh, uh, when there is, there is this agitation by IPOP that they want Biafra and so on, what were people like Peter Obi, they didn't come out voraciously to condemn those young chaps. And look, if you guys don't know what happened, you know, we've gone through a very terrible, a very terrible war that we don't want to see again. Some, some also said during the onset of Boko Haram that Northerners really spoke up against it. Uh, that even when the Jonathan administration went in full swing against, against Boko Haram, uh, they were accusing him of uh, maltreating the North. That it's, it's not different from what happened with IPOB in this. How can two wrongs make a right? They, from the South East, should have known, should have learned a lesson from the North that, look, we want power now. We should do everything to integrate ourselves as Nigerians. That's the lesson they should have They, they also with. said the Boko, Haram, let me, let me the, the Boko Haram insurgency did not prevent Boko Haram's uh, election in 2015, even when they openly identified him as someone that can intercede for them. No, 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 no. That's not it. The failure of the PDP at that time mm. to do the needful was what brought Buhari. If you look at the, the combination of APC, it was a combination of people who are not normally of the same uh, uh, ideology. So how can you now say uh, that uh, is as the result of Boko Haram that uh, uh, Buhari emerged as president? No. No. The, the, what the questions they are asking that uh, in 2015 Boko Haram was striking Abuja and their intention was to take over Nigeria mm -hmm. and Islamize the country. That mm -hmm. didn't stop the country from electing Buhari. That an, an administration for Biafra should not stop. Uh, someone from that part of the country to also be elected as president. No, what That's the saying, argument that what, what we are saying, saying is that, like I said earlier, two wrongs don't make a right. The Southwest should have learned, the South is sorry, mm. should have learned a lesson from that. If that is what they are saying, which is not true though. There were Northerners who were very outspoken against Boko Haram right from the onset. Don't forget that some of our generals were killed even. People like uh, uh, General Mohamed Shua during that time. So it is not true to say that uh, because of that, uh, Buhari emerged. 
Look at the combination of those people that. But, but, but Buhari accused Jonathan of high-handedness against. It him. was. It was not only like, when he was going against him, it. Was, it No, 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 no. It was not only Buhari that accused Jonathan. Mm. Everybody that voted for Buhari at that time accused Jonathan. It's the same thing we are seeing now. That's why we are angry with him for taking this kind of trouble and pain to bring you to power. And this is what we are getting. In fact, Nigerians should praise, should, should appreciate the North for coming out to speak objectively against things that are happening now. There is no part of this country that has been so outspoken like uh, the North. Don't forget, it was the Northern elders that first of Resignation of uh, Buhari. So some, some commentators have said even the nurses uh, bearing the greatest brunt exactly. of current insecurity exactly. and economic hardship. Exactly. That's why the North is very outspoken. I expect other parts of the countries to be sympathetic to the North. Although the thing has, um, has uh, 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 embroidered the whole part of the country now. But the North is worst hit. Some will say self-inflicted. Well, if you say that to some people, I will agree. Because we should have done more. But to some of us, we did our best. Like 2019, some of us decided that there is a need to change the leadership by then. Some of us voted for Atiku. Some of us worked for Atiku. Because we thought he was more prepared and he could deal with the situation. So, not all of us were okay. guilty of this. Between... 2015 to 2019, some of us were guilty. But from 2019 up to now, some of us took a different path. Okay, l let's look at the education sector. Yes. Uh, over five months, uh, students are home, about two million of them in public schools. Uh, how would you react to government's handling uh, of this matter? The Minister of uh, Education, some three weeks ago, said uh, the matter will be resolved in two weeks. After three weeks, we are not seeing much headway. It's a disaster. And the Minister of Education is missing in action. Since all this, uh, since all this crisis started, how many times have you seen him? Apart from the Minister of Labor. And I listened to the Minister of State for Labor, Honorable Minister of State for Labor, Festus mm -hmm. Kiamu, I think last week on channels. I'm disappointed to his response about his response on how to go about it, that the federal government cannot borrow money. You know the cross of the matter. If, the, if ASU have seen or noticed that the government is serious and sincere and empathical about the issues, ASU would have backed down. The arrogance at which the government is dealing with the situation is what is inflamed. Is what is making it intractable. If the government has come with some empathy, some seriousness, and some sincerity, as we are human beings, they are Nigerians. Some of them, their children are, 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 in the, are, are in the schools too. They will see reason with the government. It's because of this arrogance. That's why the, 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 the issues, the problem become intractable. Even without money, if the approach, if the approach was good, as we will listen to them. Is it not embarrassing even to have said that the president himself intervened and this, the issue is still not resolved? Uh, has the president intervened? You there, was a, there was a time he intervened. I think there was but a not time... directly? I, perhaps indirectly? I think there was a time, mm. if my memory is correct, I think there was a time I saw them in a meeting with the president. No, no direct uh, meeting yet uh, okay. from our records. But do you think... So whatever it is, yes, even if there's no direct meeting, the it's direct embarrassing. intervention of the president is needed... Uh, at this crucial point? Of course. These are his children. These are his children. Whatever needs to be done, he should do it to, to see that uh, uh, the children go back to school. Already the parents are very angry about it. Because the, the parents feel that those in power, their children are not in government schools. That's why they don't care. This is the time the president should stand up and prove some of these things wrong. And ASU is not backing down because of corruption, too. They can see the kind of stealing, corruption going on in the country. How can you tell them that there's no money? Government is a continuum. The government could sit down with them and say, look, please, this is what we can afford now. Government is a continuum 
other government that will come will continue. But the arrogance is what is, you know, hindering the progress of these uh, talks. As we are human beings, they are Nigerians, they have children. There's nobody that wants to go back to school so that they can earn their salaries like the Asu people. You know what our children are going through? Apart from this security trauma, you know what Nigerians are going through? I had the Minister of State for, for, for Labor saying that uh, the Nigerians are talking about to, tomatoes. Ha. If they don't talk about tomatoes, food on their table, what would they talk about? That's why they voted the government, so that they can have food on, on their table. How will you describe the emergence of two parties? Uh, in 1999, it was AD, uh, APP and PDP, even though we saw an alliance between the AD and the APP. Or well, subsequently, it's more of two horse race. But uh, the emergence for 2023 general election, especially the presidential election of NMPP and Labour Party, appear to have somehow distorted that balance, that structure. That is one of the reasons why I told you that uh, initially that Nigerians are going to see, with Atiku, are going to see politics in its, in its original form. Mm. You are going to see alliances towards towards the election. What, what form of alliances? Alliances that will help uh, the PDP in will, winning election, that will complement PDP in winning the election. So you expect uh, much alliance? As PDP is aligning and realigning some other parties? I won't let the cat out of the bag. Mm. But somebody has let the cat out of the bag yesterday, uh, or, or last week, will I say, the president's nephew. Are you aware that he has dumped APC and moved into PDP? After he lost a re-election ticket. Whatever you say, whatever it is, it's, 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 uh, it's made The president's uh, senator had, and even, was it early this year also? Okay, or last year? He, he has less uh, to. Mm. And I can assure you. And I'm seeing, we, I'm seeing defections. Not, uh, not you are the seeing. There are already governors uh. within APC and senators within APC that are reaching out to Atiku, as I'm talking to you now. And as we move on, you see them unfold. That's why I told you when in my opening remarks that you are going to see politicking in its original form, not what we have now. Is it a politicking of northern Nigeria? No, pan-Nigeria. Pan Pan-Nigerian politicking. Is there, I think it's not a northern... It's not a northern Be, because, politician. you know, you've heard this conspiracy theory that mm. what happened to Jonathan mm. uh, in 2015 may happen to uh, Tinubu in 2023, that uh, you saw how a lot of people moved from PDP to APC in 2015. So those that remain behind in... PDP working against PDP in that election. Some have predicted that, starting from majorly in northern Nigeria, uh, that that drive to see if another Fulani succeed, a fellow Fulani will see that mass movement. How will you react I, to that? I, I won't comment on that, but I can assure you that as we move on, you will see what will happen. I just sympathize with, uh, uh, I sympathize and empathize with Mr. President. As we go on now, he's going to see a lot of betrayal and backstabbing. Those, he, those whom he trusts are going to betray him as we move on. They are going to detach themselves from his government. And he will be really shocked. Is it because they know his days are numbered and they want to go to where the new king is? The new, the new king him? is. I have a friend in Katina who is standing election. We were talking with him. I said, ah, look, I saw your poster, but I didn't see. He's in APC. I said, I saw your poster, and I didn't see the president's picture in your posters. Why? I said, look, having the president's picture in my poster now is a liability. Mm. Fa fa take back to 2015, when even PDP members were using exactly uh, Buhari's, Buhari's uh, a, a picture in their alongside posters. Alongside yes. What a turnaround. I'm, I'm so, I'm so, um, I'm very, very unhappy with the president because the kind of international and local goodwill that he came with to power is not the kind of goodwill 
international goodwill and local goodwill he's going to live with. He's going to leave office with. And this is mostly partly to his fault and those around him for not listening to Nigerians. I expect the president, mm -hmm. apart from official reports that comes to his table mm -hmm. daily, he should have a backdoor method, mechanisms. Back of, channels. Back channels. For communication. Exactly. Not only communication, of knowing what is actually happening in the country. Now that is it, intelligence. Uh, because those, those, those around him are not telling him the true picture of what is happening. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that the president didn't know that he was going to be kidnapped with uh, Nasuru until when the uh, governor of Kaduna went to tell him that, look, sir, we are going to be kidnapped. Too. That's what the uh, governor of uh, Kaduna claimed. Whether he claimed it or not, he's one of the APC governors that I respect. He's very outspoken. He says the truth, whether whatever, ha whatever will happen, I he says it as it is. from the president's yeah, th That's true. Mm. Ha, uh, the governor will be telling lies mm. against the president? No, no issue of lies, just no. to authenticate. <laughs> if it's not a fact, they would have come out with a rebuttal. It's a fact. That shows you how detached those in power are from the people. And the good thing is that as human beings and as leaders, all of them have sworn to uphold the Constitution, to do justice, to be fair to all Nigerians. We will all stand before our Creator. To, if, they fail, if they fail to be accountable to us, they will not fail to be accountable to Almighty God where power has no basis, tradition has no basis, nothing has basis except justice. Some had predicted that uh, the Buhari they know is not one that readily shows interest in the uh, political success of others. I don't know whether you... Uh, what the uh, political success of himself? Yes, that he's, uh, he's just... Uh, that even uh, during 2019, there were several states of the Federation he never asked for uh the people to vote for the their local candidates you will ask them to vote for uh, vote according to your conscience but that does, was, does that explain why the president uh didn't quite show strong interest in the apc primary he didn't come out openly to take a position but that was not the situation in 2015. Sit the, the situation in 2015 was that the president went around and said apc sack from top to bottom uh, vote APC from top to bottom. bottom. So, that, so, what has changed between 2015 and 19? Why is he not interested? He is the leader of the party. He is the president. If the party fails, he fails. And this is going to tell on his legacy. I'm so. In fact, at times when I see the president, I I feel he's not the person I know. I know him very closely before he became president. Very, very closely. He knows my parents. Who? The president. Mm. In fact, the first two years after he was elected, I, met, I, I, I approached somebody very close to him. That Look, can you arrange an appointment? I want to see the president. You know what the person told me? He said, look, we can arrange for you to see the president on one condition. Mm. The president you know the General Buhari you know before he became president, mm. and the way you used to talk to him where, before, before he became president, that is not the way you are going to talk to him now. Mm. If you agree, we will arrange. I said, if that uh, is... What, uh, what way do they expect you to talk? That means you will not tell him the truth. You won't be able to tell him your mind, what you think should be done, or what you think, or what you see, what is happening. And I told him, I said, well, if that is the case, there's no need for me to see him. Because if I can't see him and tell him what <laughs> is happening, what, what's the point going to see him? I don't need an appointment. The last seven to eight years, except for uh, His Excellency Senator Bukola Saraki that I work with, that I'm still working with, mm -hmm. just to correct your profile, I'm not mm -hmm. his uh, former aide, I'm still his aide. Okay. Oh, no, what, what the profile said, you worked with him when he was Senate President. I'm still with him. Okay. Yeah. So... I, I, I'm not looking for a job. Mm. From the kind of family and uh, tribe I come from, we don't lick people's ass to get a job. Mm. We look at people and tell them the truth. If the president is watching 
uh, AIT now, he knows the kind of uh, person I am. So the meeting never held? It never meeting? held. You didn't want to compromise on? Why? Whatever I, I, I'm almost 60 now, whatever I have on earth, I'm going to be accountable to Almighty God. I have only one wife and two children. What, what, do, what do I need uh, worldly things for? I'm just praying to God to, 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 to have mercy on my, on, or, 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 to have mercy on me. At this age, why should I go and be doing uh, things that are not uh, ethical? Let, let's end this way. Uh, how, what channel of communications, uh, relations with the people, uh, getting the feedback from the people, do you expect the next president to uh, put in place, to, to uh, safeguard running into this problem? If uh, what Atiku is doing now, he continues to do it, he has a, he has a back channel. He has a uh, he, he has a backdoor channel of uh, knowing what is happening. And as small as I am, I have interacted with Atiku and I have sent messages to him on on the phone, on WhatsApp, mm. and text message. He has replied. I've sent some report to him and I've seen him read it. How do we know he he reads those report? He makes a marks on them. Mm. If he continues that way and continues to reach out to, he, he has friends across the country. Woods, he, as a president, if there's a fire in any place, mm. he can call them. If, they will call him even before, before the fire starts that, Mr. President, there's fire on the mountain here, and we are going to put it off for you. That is the kind of leader Nigeria needs now. Leader that can reach out to Nigerians. Leader that has network across the country. That's the problem. That's what the. I'm not shy about offering my opinions, but I'm always very reticent about dealing with persons. <laughs> but it is inescapable that when a man has offered himself for public service, we are left with no choice but to contemplate their persons and necessarily offer value assessments and in most cases subjective opinions because we're dealing with persons. But I would say that instead of focusing on the odiousness of the mass of those who have offered themselves and they are mostly odious. It's been a gallery of rogues coming out to talk about wanting to be president of Nigeria. From the one who was convicted, look, it's, um, I recall that a few years ago I did one that if we do nothing about restructuring our governance systems, the one that will come after Buhari will be worse than Buhari. And if you look at the gallery of rogues that have come out, it will be clear to you exactly what to expect. Let me start with the godfather of them all, the Lagos Octopus. It wasn't always like this between me and him. He's never seen me before, I, never, not once. But when he was coming to power for the first time, I took night bus from Abuja to Lagos to come and vote for him. Prince Ademola Adeniji Adele, may God rest his soul. He was running as Sarumi's deputy. I slept in his house because his brother-in-law, my friend, lived in his house. And that was where I stayed whilst I was in the law school. I woke up in his house in the morning to go and vote. He was on his balcony. And he asked me, man, D, <laughs> I said, ah, Papa, <laughs> Emaru, a D all the way. Yeah, a D all the way. That was the mask. I Thank you so much for your patience to watch from the beginning to the end. I hope you have learned something from the video you have just watched. The video you have just watched is to bring information to your doorstep and for educational purposes. It is not to demonize anybody. Let us watch continuously and see who can be able to make a sense out of every nonsense we are seeing. 
we must continue. We move. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them. At the end of the day, Biafra is here. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please kindly subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so that you are notified each time I upload a video. You will be among the first to receive it. Thank you and remain blessed. Bye bye. See you again. Thank you.